What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on my 2007 Ford Explorer with the 4.6 liter V8. So the heater hose is gone bad. It's uh, leaking pretty badly. There's a massive puddle of coolant on the ground. Actually had to wind up sticking a towel under it just to uh, keep it from spilling everywhere until I was able to get a new heater hose. So the heater hose, I don't know if you'll be able to see where it starts. It's right, you can't see it from there. Well, we have to move this the snorkel out of the way really to get a good look at it. But anyway, it runs down, this comes around, comes out the top of the engine, wraps around, comes down the side, and you can see it there. Then it over there, it sort of splits into two, and it connects to this uh, valve right here for the heater valve. I'm going to be replacing that as well. On a quick side note, the first car part I ever changed on a car when I knew nothing about cars, maybe 10 years ago, was a heater control valve on a 1994 Ford Explorer. The parts haven't changed much. They're still cheap, made out of plastic, and uh, you know, just cooling in, cooling out. I think the old one may have had four parts, but four hose lines instead of two. But uh, yeah, it just sits in there like this. This is the old one. Vacuum line connects to there. Uh, the J hose goes there, and the heater hose that we're replacing goes into the bottom. And uh, then there's a section also that goes lower. And uh, so we'll have to replace that hose. So part of it will be done from under the car. And then I think the front part of it obviously will be done from the top right here. And uh, then we'll have to uh, bleed the cooling system after that to uh, get it good to go. But um, so first things first, just to gain access to the front here, we're gonna be taking off this snorkel. I'm not sure if we're gonna have to remove this bottle here. It's uh, pretty much empty because of all the coolant that got lost. Uh, I don't know how long the leak has actually been going on. Uh, I recently changed the radiator and I think that once I changed the radiator, uh, probably the, this weak, other weak spot in the cooling system began to show itself. So uh, we're gonna be go ahead, taking this out and uh, hoping that nothing else rears its ugly head. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take the snorkel off. The snorkel is held in by two Phillips head, I mean flathead clamps. Just loosen them up and pop it off. And undo the vacuum connections. With that out of the way, now we have pretty good access to it. It's this hose right here. And you can see it snakes down and around the side of the engine and uh, it connects at the other end of the heater uh, control valve. So we'll be replacing basically everything from there. I don't know how big a mess this is gonna make when um, I pull this off, if coolant's gonna start gushing or, or not. I I'd imagine it won't, but I'm gonna be prepared anyway. So at this point, we're just gonna kinda move some of this stuff around and reach in and pull this back with a pair of pliers. I need a bigger pair of pliers. So in the case of my radiator hose, or the heater hose, it's really stuck. So I'm gonna use one of these and uh, hopefully this will help me be able to pry it off. All right, so now it's off and, and pretty dry, so now I'm gonna try to hit it from the other side now. So an easy way is to look over your new one and you'll see, if you look right here, there's a little thing that holds it to the engine, so you have to pull that out. Just look to make sure you know, see how it's held in place. There's this thing here, I'm not sure what that is. We're gonna have to find that on the other side. And um, yeah, then we'll just take the old one out, put the new one in, It'd be that easy. Alright, so I'm having a hard time kind of holding this with one hand to show you, but if you picture it like this, this is how it's going to sit inside the car. So that's going to be at the front, this is going to be at the back. So after you remove that panel I just showed you a picture of, let's put it on the screen again right here, you'll want to uh, disconnect this section here. And this section right here is going to be going into the, um, the uh, heater core valve. So I'm going to... Uh, just go ahead and um, I'm taking out the whole heater core valve with it. It was way too hard to get the bottom thing disconnected. So 
I'm just gonna do it when it's out of the car. So I'm disconnect the bottom, pull the hose out, and uh, we'll be ready to put the new one. So when you're under the car, there you can see it right there. It's covered in coolant, so that's where my leak is. So uh, I was able to see that before without removing the panel from the other side of the frame rail, but you can't get access from that side. So this position, it's gonna be pretty much impossible for me to pull that clip off with the pliers and show you at the same time by holding the camera. So I'm gonna set you down and uh, I'll be back once I've pulled out the hose. All right, so now I've got it out of the car. Uh, so I'm gonna hook the new uh, heater valve to the pipe and put the new one in. And also all that on the ground, it does make a mess, but that's that's not a mess. That's that's just water. That's I splashed my face with that. Uh, when the I pulled the pipe out, uh, coolant came gushing out and got like all over like on my face. So I was just splashing my face off. But it does make a mess. But I had a bucket to catch most of it, but it just splattered all off the frame, so it really did make a mess. Anyway, time to put the new one in, and then we'll have to uh, fill up the coolant system and bleed it through. So you can see right here, this is where my leak was coming from, and uh, one of the biggest differences between this part and the new one is that the new one has a metal joint there instead of a plastic joint, and I think this is going to make a big difference in preventing this from ever happening again. Although that was probably an original part and it lasted 110,000 miles. Hopefully this one will last another 110, if not more. This little yellow tab attaches to the bottom piece of the, uh, the hose. And when you put it on and attach it, you just kind of twist this and it will pop off and lock right into place. So it makes it a lot easier to get it on as opposed to uh, getting it off, which was kind of hard, really. I mean, not hard, but just frustrating. Uh, so this is a really nice thing that it has. So I wanted to talk to you guys about this thing right here. Uh, I said it made it really easy to get the clip off as opposed to sticking pliers in there. Well, there was a catch in my in my case. The clip, this is the clip it was attached to and it was too big. It, it didn't seat and when I turned the car on and started trying to bleed the coolant, it just started gushing coolant all over the place. Uh, so if you actually look at the other one, it's just a little bit smaller there, you see? So definitely be on the lookout for that if you're uh, doing this um, because it made a huge mess. I didn't film it because I just panicked basically and just was too quick to clean it up. Um, but yeah, bear that in mind. Uh, now we just gotta hook up the top two pieces back to the system. So the one thing I didn't do that I did not film was bleeding the coolant. Uh, I basically just filled up the radiator, filled up the expansion tank, turned on the car, and as it bubbled out air bubbles, I kept filling it up until there weren't any more air bubbles. Then I hopped in the car and I had revved the car to about 3500 RPM, which is what it locks the revs at in park, and uh, just hold it there for about uh, 30 seconds. Uh, come back out to the expansion tank and see if, if watch it bubble, and as it bubbled, um, just let it bubbled out once it went the level went down top to back off and repeated the process until I wasn't getting any more bubbles and then I took it for a test drive and uh, I just pushed it really hard you know going up to red line so that the water pump would have to work as hard as possible to force the air out of the system and uh, my car did not overheat my heat works better than I think it's ever worked since I've had the car um, if there is a bleeder screw on this car, let me know because that obviously wasn't the easiest way to do this, but uh, I couldn't find a bleeder screw and I couldn't find any information on it online. I'm sure it exists. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. That's how you replace the heater hose and uh, I could not find a video on how to do this on this model of car, so uh, I don't know why it wasn't there. Maybe it's just simple and people didn't see the need for a DIY, but uh, it's out there now. So uh, hit that like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.